Hey everybody, welcome back to Madden Science. This is part two of our APES flipped classroom lesson, Unit 8 Pathogens and Infectious Disease. In part one, we covered kind of background, intro, the microbiology, and we went through most of COVID-19 and coronavirus. In this video, we're going to continue covering the different pathogens that are highlighted in Unit 8 and a few others that I decided to throw in. So a reminder, flip classroom ideas, notes, drawings, questions, and comment with some insightful link, some research, some current event down below. Again, this is a very timely lesson in that we are in the beginning, perhaps middle of COVID-19 pandemic. Just a quick reminder of the pathogens that we are going through. We've got different viruses, bacteria, and pathogens. All right, let's look at HIV. Human immunodeficiency virus can see the percent who die if left untreated leads to AIDS. Here's a map for prevalence. Again, Africa, India, really cool radio lab podcast on patient zero. Here's a look close up at the way in which HIV impacts our immune system, right? So through antigen presenting cells and T cells. So we looked at the evolution or the phylogeny of COVID-19. Here it is within HIV. So human immunodeficiency virus branching off from SIV, simian from chimps, where it's believed to have initially transferred. So chimps as a vector transferred over to humans, possibly through eating bushmeat. And then also FIV for feline. So we can see all three of those, if we zoom out a little bit further, the different groups and distinctions of HIV and other mammal immunodeficiency viruses, again, within cats and within chimps. Here's a view at tracing that simian source all the way back. Again, end of the video, we'll probably throw in a piece from Jeffrey Sachs that talks about malaria and HIV. So stay tuned for that. We got tuberculosis. This is crazy. Dormant or latent in the lungs of 2.5 billion people. Top 10 cause of death, right? Is the all time cause of death for bacteria. Again, fairly contagious. Good number that die. Here you can see the cases and their uneven distribution throughout the world. Here's a look at multiple drug resistance tuberculosis, which has been kicking up lately. So MDR TB. Here's another map of that. If we jump over to Zika, again, so this is by the Aedes uh, mosquito, specifically Aedes aegypti, which we have around here. You can see them, they got little striped legs on them. So this is a viral, right? The mosquito is a vector. Percent who die is near zero, probably zero, but was fairly important in the world and in the news media with passing from pregnant mother to infant babies. We mentioned two other coronaviruses, SARS and MERS. So these guys are from years past, outbreaks of a similar yet different coronavirus. SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, MERS, Middle East respiratory syndrome. The next pathogen that we're looking at in detail is cholera. Cholera is bacterium, so this is from Vibrio cholera, and it co causes severe diarrhea, so very contagious. Death rate is not super high, but it's very significant worldwide. So causes acute gastrointestinal infection. Let's see how it works. So this is, in much of the developed world, something that's on the decline. In the developing world, still highly significant, especially in and around natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, can be a big problem. Here's generally childhood diarrhea. We can see cholera cases, again, major emphasis within Africa. Here's cholera deaths. All right, I mentioned that, I'd, that information is beautiful, the microbe scope, is my new favorite website. Well, my old favorite website, Protein Data Bank. Get on it, 
crazy cool, super fascinating. This is cholera toxin. It talks about how bacteria make their toxins. Here it is in action. So cholera toxin can do one thing. It's going to bind to a G protein, used for cellular signaling, and it attaches an ADP, adenosine diphosphate, onto it. And this basically turns it on and on and on. So it locks it in the on position. And so never any signal, 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 signal that starts to transport water and sodium ions out and into the intestines. We can see what that looks like here. So the movement of water and salt into the intestines as opposed to being absorbed. This leads to incredibly watery stool and diarrhea, dehydration, and oftentimes death. Here's a slightly different view of just that. So you can see right that epithelial lining within the small intestine and the bacteria Vibrio cholera. Next up, bubonic plague. So we've all heard about it, Black Death from centuries ago. Fairly contagious, large amount who die, still present in our world, which is interesting. This is caused by a bacteria, Yersinia pestis. Again, in the Middle Ages, Black Death killed between 50 and 100 million people. Can be easily treated with antibiotics, but without it can still prove fatal. Here you can see Plague Doctor and that creepy mass that you've probably seen at some point. We mentioned earlier the vectors from rats to fleas to humans. We can see the difference here between bubonic plague and pneumonic plague. And pneumonic plague being one of the deadliest and also fairly contagious infectious diseases if we look back. So let's just kick over here. If we show everything in here, not from number of sufferers, but deadliness, here's pneumonic plague at the very top. All right, kicking back. Again, they got a 50 million deaths in Europe. Again, very big deal. Um, historic changes. And the truth is, it still kills people today. So in the United States, still some. Um, so this is reported about 10 years ago, but significant numbers throughout the world, mostly centered in Sub-Saharan Africa. Here's a graph on human plague. It's from World Health Organization. All right, lastly, parasite infection, malaria. Malaria caused by a parasite, Plasmodium, has a few different species. So it's mosquito-borne, so mosquitoes are the bacteria. You can see a zoom in here of it infecting a red blood cell. Here's malaria cases around the world. So I've had to take malaria medication. I've seen people with malaria, including one person die from malaria, and travels from to Peru and India and Kenya and Tanzania. Here's malaria deaths. Here's a look at the life cycle of the plasmodium parasite in humans. If you want an awesome account of this, read Carl Zimmer's Parasite Rex. You can also check here Drew Barry and this outstanding video. So it's linked in our playlist, but here's a little piece of it. Her infected saliva also carries the malaria parasite. The parasite rides the bloodstream like a network of roads, seeking its first target. The core of your body's blood filter system, the liver. And lastly, a connection to the world and global impact of infectious disease. Here from Columbia University's Earth Institute, Jeffrey Sachs. This is a, an unforgivable and of course also unforgettable site that I saw in Zamba Central Hospital in southern Malawi a few months ago. It's unforgivable because what you are seeing there is one child laid next to another in malaria coma. Malaria is a disease that is largely preventable. It is 100 percent treatable. It's going to kill more than two million children this year. You saw in that clip 
that opened the session that it averages two dollars sixty eight cents to treat it's even less than that for pediatric doses and yet you can walk into a hospital that's the central hospital of the major commercial city of Malawi and you can see children dying before your eyes What conceivable justification could there be for this? We have to understand the problem, and we have to solve it. We have to understand that it's urgent, because our own survival is going to depend on it as well. You can't leave millions of people to die and believe you're safe. You can't believe we're fighting terrorism if we're neglecting life by the millions. It's impossible. You can't believe the pathogens stop at national boundaries. They don't have to carry passports. Avian flu can come from any infection, any recombination. And I can tell you, don't think it's a myth that some disease someday could spread from an animal reservoir, mutate into a human population, start spreading and before you know it you have a global pandemic don't think that's a myth that's what aids is and it's really important ladies and gentlemen to reflect on a little bit of a shocker the genomic record suggests to us that aids though we celebrated the not celebrated marked i should say marked the 25th anniversary of the quote discovery of this disease the genetic record suggests that this disease is about 75 years in human circulation. That it probably passed from an animal to human population sometime around 1930, someplace in most likely Western Cameroon. You know, it was 50 years of transmission in Africa. Perhaps a million Africans infected in 1981 before it was even recognized as a disease because Africans just die, that's normal. And then when it was discovered in, in quotation marks, discovered in San Francisco, all of a sudden we realized we had a global pandemic on our hands and we still haven't gotten it under control. That's what you get when you believe that it doesn't matter that somebody else in another part of the world is dying and that there's no reason to pay attention to their health. The interconnectedness is so palpable, it is unbelievable that we can't find our way to solutions. And lastly, just a reminder from givewell.org, their list of top charities, things you might want to consider moving forward. All right, y'all, that's it. That's Unit 8, Pathogens and Infectious Diseases. Please let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to put your comments with interesting and important links in the description below. We'll see you next time.